Ja, verlaten Daily Minutes 1550 uh, met een uitzending van vandaag 16 februari 2019. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Het was weer een keer gebeurd. Ik was in slaap gevallen. <laughs> de reden waarom dat de laatste week uh, steeds gebeurt is dat ik, uh, ik slaap zittend. Ik heb dat denk ik wel eens verteld, maar in ieder geval uh, er is er een gezondheidsreden voor. En ik heb sinds een nauw ruime week heb ik een nieuwe stoel. En die zit verschrikkelijk veel comfortabeler. En daardoor uh, ben ik een paar keer, uh, ja, mijn vader kan de wekker doorgeslapen. En ook uh, in slaap gevallen overdag. En uh, het is de stoel waar ik ook televisie in kijk. Dus, uh, maar goed, op zich goed nieuws. Maar een beetje lullig dat het tijdens de Daily Minutes gebeurt. Het is nu uh, tien voor tien, dus ik, uh, ik maak alsnog een late uitzending. Uh, the following uh, bulletin will be uh, completely in English. Ik heb het uh, RCB bulletin en geen data vandaag. Um, ja, tijdens de, de Slowscan Radio was ik er vandaag ook niet. Ik had wel uh, zelf meegeschreven met uh, een SDR, een Kiwi SDR ontvanger dit keer. Uh, ik wil niet zeggen dat het heel veel beter ging, want het beeld stond nog steeds schuin. Maar uh, de karteltjes die er vaak aan zitten, er zit een soort van zaagpatroon in als je via web SDR's kijkt. Uh, dat was er niet. En het schuinstaan van het beeld, dat komt waarschijnlijk doordat uh, het geluid met zo'n ontvanger net iets uh, trager loopt. Of iets uitgerekt is ten opzichte van, uh, van, van de realiteit. Um, maar goed, helemaal zeker weet ik dat niet. Bij de stream is dat in elk geval wel zo. Um, maar goed, we gaan naar uh, de RCB. Hallo, dit is Mike Marsh, G1IAR. En welkom bij de TX News podcast van de GB2RS National News voor zondag, de 17th of februari 2019. Supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain en brought to you by TX Factor. The news headlines from the RSGB this week. First amateur geostationary satellite transponder now active. Updated ITU document for emergency communications. And could your club host train the trainers? The geostationary amateur radio narrowband transponder on the SHL2 Q0100 satellite was made available for amateur experimental use on the afternoon of Tuesday, the 12th of February. The 250 kHz bandwidth transponder uses the 2.4 GHz band for the uplink with the downlink in the 10.45 GHz band and should provide communications over a wide portion of the globe. Potentially, both Brazil and Thailand might be in range from the UK. Contacts have been made by running as little as 500 milliwatts of SSB to a 1.2 meter dish and you can listen to the narrowband transponder from anywhere in the world by using the online web SDR which has been developed by AMSAT UK and BATC and it's at Goon Hilly in the UK. If you'd like to check it out head over to shale.batc.org.uk forward slash November Bravo. Time to get very excited. The ITU has updated a key recommendation for cross-border usage of the emergency communications equipment. The new 2019 edition of ITU recommendation M1637 is clearer regarding countries facilitating the use of radio equipment that may be physically brought by visiting relief personnel into the territory where there is a disaster or an emergency. The recommendation is intended to avoid delays due to customs procedures and type approvals and also to facilitate the use of both professional as well as amateur radio equipment in such situations. The URL for M1637 is up at itu.int forward slash rec. The RSGB is in the process of organising Train the Trainers courses for this year. Now, if your club would like to host one, then please get in touch via email on tech.chair at rsgb.org.uk. And further details and the list of the requirements for hosting a course can be found online at rsgb.org slash train hyphen the hyphen trainers. Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, otherwise known as ARIS, has planned another slow scan television weekend. Transmissions will run from Friday, the 17th of February, at 17.25 UTC. 
SSTV images will be transmitted on 145.800 MHz using SSTV mode PD120. Now, these can be received using equipment as simple as a 2-meter handheld radio, a scanner that covers the band, or even an online web SDR receiver. Transmissions will consist of eight images from NASA on the Air celebration and four ARIS commemorative images. Received images can be posted and viewed online, and ARIS offers an ARIS SSTV award for those who receive and decode at least one SSTV image in the session. And I can confirm I've managed to download at least five really clear to view images of SSTV from the ISS, and it's exciting every time they head over. So why not tune in to 145.800, get your SSTV program ready to roll, and you'll be downloading some pretty stunning images live from outer space at 17,000 miles an hour. A date for your diary now, SOS Radio Week 2019, will take place between 0 UTC on the 1st of May, right up to 23.59 on the 31st of May. Individual amateur radio operators and clubs are invited to register as official SOS Radio Week stations and operate during the month. Stations can be run under individual, club or special event call signs from home or other locations. There are a few restrictions as to what can be done, when and how or where, other than to warn participants not to operate within the vicinity of a lifeboat or a coast watch station without clearing it with them first. For more information, check out the website at sosradioweek.org.uk. Finally, in the main headline news, Riley Hollingsworth, Kilo 4 Zulu Delta Hotel, will oversee the development and implementation phases of the ARRL's new Volunteers Monitor Programme. Kilo 4 Zulu Delta Hotel once handled amateur radio enforcement for the FCC volunteer monitors and will work in cooperation with the FCC. Volunteers trained and vetted by ARRL will monitor the amateur bands for possible instances of misconduct or to recognise exemplary on-air operation. Cases of flagrant violations or non-compliance will be directed to the FCC for action in accordance with the FCC guidelines. The programme aims to re-energise amateur radio enforcement efforts, although ARRL officials estimate that it will take 9 to 12 months before the first volunteer monitors start beginning to file reports. Moving on to the details of rallies and events for the upcoming week now. Sunday the 17th, the Radioactive Rally takes place at Namwich Civic Hall in Cheshire, where the postcode is Charlie Whiskey 5, 5 Delta Golf. The venue's got free car parking and the doors open from 10.30 in the morning and there will be a bring and buy, as well as traders and an RSGB bookstall. There's catering on site. If you'd like some more information, give Stuart Jackson a ring on his mobile, which is 07880 Two five three four. Next Sunday, the 24th, it's the Rainham Radio Rally, and it takes place at the Victory Academy on the Magpie Hall Road in Chatham in Kent, where the postcode is Mike Echo 4 5 Juliet Bravo. Doors open at 10 in the morning. It runs through until 4 in the afternoon. It will cost you £2.50 for adult entry and free entry for children. There'll be local and national traders. The famous Bratz Kitchen will be running. The Bratz Interactive Zone for Kids as well the Bratz junk and talking station on 145.550 using Golf Bravo for Romeo 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 also next Sunday the 24th the Red Rose Rally will be held at St Joseph's Hall on Chapel Street in Lee where the postcode is Whiskey November 7 to Papa Quebec doors open at 11 in the morning there'll be trade individual and club stands including an RSGB bookstall as well as bring and buy now anyone wishing to hire a table should get in touch with Colin on this email address it's rally at wmrc.co.uk and there will be catering available on site if you'd like some more information on the whole thing head over to the website at wmrc.co 
uk. Now you see what good publicising you get on GB2RS News. If you'd like to get your event into Radcom or onto GB2RS and onto the RSGB website, get your details sent in as early as you possibly can via email to radcom at rsgb.org.uk and we will paste it across the media outlets. But we do need to know about four months in advance for the Radcom magazine. Moving on to the DX News now, which comes from 425 DX News and other sources. Jean-Pierre Foxtrot 6 Charlie Tango Foxtrot will be active as 3 Whiskey 9 Juliet Foxtrot from the island of Fuquoc, which is Alpha Sierra 128, from the 19th of February to the 6th of March. Now, the plans are mainly to be on 80, 40, 20 and 17 metres. And if you get a contact, QSL via EQSL or direct to Echo. Echo Alpha 5, Golf Lima. A group of operators will be on the air as Kilo Papa 3 Romeo Eka from Culebra Island, which is November Alpha 249, between the 22nd and the 24th of February. They will be operating SSB, CW and FT8 Fox and Hound mode on the 80 to 10 metre bands and QSL for this operation is Echo Alpha 5, Golf Lima. Shabu Mike Zero Kilo Romeo India is visiting Burundi until the 26th of February. He's been issued with the call sign 9 Uniform 4 Romeo India and plans to operate on the 40 to 10 metre bands using SSB and CW. And if you get a contact, QSL via club log OQRS. A group of mainly German operators will be active from Canton Island in central Kiribati until the 5th of March. Now, their call sign will be Tango 31 Echo Uniform, and they'll be on the 10 to 160 metre bands using CW, SSB, RTTY and FT8. And QSL is via Club Log OQRS. Allen Golf 4 Delta Juliet X-Ray will be on the air as Charlie 5 Delta X-Ray until the 23rd of February from the Gambia. While he's here with a group of students, activity will be in his spare time only on the 40 to 10 metre bands using CW and you can QSL direct to the home call. And finally, Philip Hotel Bravo 9 Hotel Foxtrot Delta will be active as Delta 44 Tango Alpha Quebec from Seo Vicente. And that's Iota Alpha Foxtrot 086 in the Cape Verde Islands from the 17th to the 22nd of February. Activity will be on the 40 to 10 metre bands using various digital modes and you can QSL via Logbook of the World. Moving on to the special events news now. There's only one actually this week. Members of the radio club Foxtrot 6 Kilo Mike Bravo will be active as Tango Mike 6 Charlie until the 24th of March during the traditional Dunkirk Carnival. If you get a contact with that special event station QSL via Foxtrot 6 Kilo Mike Bravo. Don't forget you can get free publicity for your special event station on GB2RS and in the Radcom magazine and online by sending an email to radcom at rsgb.org.uk as early as you possibly can. You tell us, we'll tell the world, and do remember that UK special event stations must be open to the public so our free publicity can make your efforts more widely known. Moving on to the contest news now, it's the ARRL International DX Contest ending its 48-hour run at 23.59 UTC on Sunday the 17th using CW only on the 1.8 to 28 MHz bands, the exchange's signal report and transmit power. American and Canadian stations will also send their state or their province details. On Tuesday, the 1.3 GHz UK Activity Contest runs 2000 to 2230. Then on Thursday, it's the 70 MHz UK Activity Contest, also running 2000 to 2230. Both contests use all modes and the same exchange of signal report, serial number and locator. Next weekend, next Sunday the 24th, it's the first 70 MHz cumulative contest running from 1000 to 1200 UTC. Using all modes, the exchange is signal report, serial number and locator. 
And the CQ Worldwide 160 Meter DX Contest runs for 48 hours from 2200 UTC on the 22nd to 2200 UTC on the 24th using SSB on the 1.8 megahertz band only. The exchange's signal report and CQ zone, which for the UK is 14, and American and Canadian stations will also send their state or province. And the REF Contest, R-E-F, that runs from O. 600 UTC on the 23rd to 1800 on the 24th using SSB only on the 3.5 to 28 megahertz bands the exchange is signal report and serial number with French stations sending their depart month number or overseas prefix finally in the main news now it's time for that propagation report compiled by golf zero kilo yankee alpha golf three yankee lima alpha and golf four bravo alpha oscar on friday the 15th of february we had another spotless week as the sun continued its decline into solar minimum. Geomagnetic conditions were varied with the beginning of the week, seeing the KP index hitting 1 and 2, but this didn't last due to the ongoing coronal hole activity, which saw the KP index climb to 3 and 4 by Wednesday the 13th and Thursday the 14th. To recap, coronal holes are lower energy areas on the sun with open magnetic field lines. Now, this allows the solar wind to flow outwards towards Earth. If the plasma's frozen in or embedded magnetic field has a south-facing component, it's more likely to couple with the Earth's allowing the changed particles to enter the magneto tail. A magnetic recombination event can then see them accelerated back to the Earth's magnetic poles, resulting in auroral displays and depressed maximum usable frequencies. Coronal holes appear dark when the sun is photographed in extreme ultraviolet light, so look for images marked Alpha India Alpha 211 from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, or SDO, at solarham.com. Now, next week, NOAA predicts a solar flux index of around 72, with unsettled geomagnetic conditions around the 18th, 20th and 21st due to yet more coronal hole activity. PropQuest.co.uk shows that the unsettled geomagnetic conditions can impact the critical frequency, which was topping out at around 4.5 to 5 MHz during daylight hours at times, and that means that 60 meters or the 5 MHz band may struggle a little with Envis or near local signals. 80 meters might also struggle with close-in signals after dark, as the critical frequency struggles around 3.3 to 3.5 megahertz mark. The good news is that this should improve as the month moves on, which will no doubt be welcomed by participants taking part in the RSGB's 80 meter club championships. What about VHF and upwards? Well, here we go with that news for next week. The S-Hail 2SAT transponders have gone live, and the 10 gigahertz narrowband downlink is at least as strong as expected using a satellite LNB and a 60 centimeter dish. The 2.4 gigahertz uplink is really sensitive with easy access via a second feed on the same dish and a small Yagi or patch antenna and a few watts. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the large high pressure has done well with enhanced tropo conditions during last week, and although the theme of high pressure continues into next week, there is one subtle difference. It's simply where the air over the country is coming from. Recent airflow has been from the Atlantic down to the southwest of the British Isles, and as a result, it contained plenty of moisture. This means more cloud than is ideal, but the moist layer of cloud provides a great contrast to the dry air above the temperature inversion at the top of the cloud layer. Now, this is what gives the tropo conditions, since moisture is a big player in the value of the refractive index of the air, and changes of the index are what produces the ducting. As we move into next week, the flow of air around the high is coming from across the continent, so it'll be drier and there might not be so much useful tropo about, but at the very least we could expect tropo conditions to be more variable despite the high pressure remaining in control. Moon declination peaked yesterday 
And with Perigee on Saturday, it's another good week for EME. Peak moon elevation is around midnight, moving into the early hours as the week progresses. And that's your lot from the propagation team for another high-pressure week ahead. And that's all we've got for your GP2RS national news for the UK from around the world this week. Don't forget, try and catch up with your regional GB2RS newsreader who will be on the air on Sunday reading out all the stories local to you. If you don't know who's doing it and you've not heard your local broadcast yet, I urge you to head across to the txfactor.co.uk website where if you click on the GB2RS news tab, you will grab a PDF file of all the broadcasters that are closest to you and there's no excuse not to be tuning in to your local news on a Sunday morning. Good luck with that. I'm Mike Marsh, G1 IAR, reporting with the TX News weekly podcast of GB2RS. Good DX for the week ahead and have fun downloading those SSTV images from the International Space Station throughout the Action Pack weekend. Thanks for listening. We will see you back here next week with the very latest update of GB2RS News. Deed ik zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x, Dat is ook te vinden rechts bovenaan de webpagina van de uitzending www.pa0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl. En microfoon naar de toer.